Lord, today, how we can say, Lord, I am not feeling emotionally good, physically, spiritually, may I still hands. And so we pray. Let us practice the Bible, the promise of the Lord. He is there to strengthen us, to heal us. Oh Lord, at this moment, we come to you in prayer. Because we would like to experience your promise. That you are the great healer of mankind. Maybe some of us this morning, Lord, are physically weak, emotionally destroyed, spiritually weak. Oh God, heal us and touch us and revive us and give us the faith, the vision to also go out to help the people who are in need. And that we can experience your promise that you are with us. Thank you. Because we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, brethren, it is the promise of the Lord. And the purpose, the third one, the purpose right. When we go out, according to the vision received by John the Revelator, the man riding on the white horse was about. What is the meaning of that? That means we have fight and warfare. We are facing fight and warfare, spiritual warfare. In the steps to Christ, she's there. The greatest battle ever fought. The greatest battle ever fought is the, is the battle against self and battle against the enemy. <laughs> there are more souls after God. We will be meeting challenges, discouragement, difficulties in the field. But the fall represents a purpose. There is a target. When we go out, there must be a target. What is your main purpose? What are your goals, brethren? So target, purpose, and goals representing, you know, the fall. And so when we go out, we must have this. And if we don't have the goals, we don't have the target, that's another problem. Because many whom God has qualified to do excellent work, success, accomplish very little because they attempt little. Oh, I just joined the group, you know, sales or no sales, okay. No, we must have target goals and purpose. Lord, I would like to offer at least five prayers today and have a sales of 20,000 this day. You know, as the Lord. God is pleased when we have goals. You aim for the star. Aim for the star means aim high. Because if you fail to reach the star, at least you hit the coconut tree. <laughs> if you only, if you only strive for the coconut tree, then if you fail that, you are on the ground. That means how to expect, expect great things according to the spread of prophecy. It is not the capabilities you now possess or ever will have that will give you success. It is that which the Lord can do for you. Amen? Amen. So it is the Lord. God saves and we only assist, we only help. Remember that you will never reach a higher standard that you yourself set. Then set your mark high and step by step, even though it be by painful effort, by self-denial and sacrifice, ascend the whole length of the ladder of progress. I like this challenge. So there are things that God is longing from us. God is longing for us, beloved students, young people. Number one, God longs to have you reach after Him by faith. Number two, He longs to have you expect great things from Him. Great things to happen. In the field when you go out for you. And that's also my desire. And he longs to give you understanding in temporal as well as in spiritual matters. He can sharpen the intellect. He can give tact and skill. So the challenge is put your talents into the world. Ask God for wisdom and it will be given you. Wow. Our theme today is here bringing hope into every home. To scatter the public issues like never before. I like the song, the theme song that you have chosen. I like that. 
So many today in the Lina church today, says there, are perishing because they don't work for souls, to save souls. And we have to scatter like the leaves of autumn, but we don't have autumn in the Philippines. We will scatter the printed page like the leaves of the storm, because we have more storm in the Philippines. <laughs> and this is a high goal in life, to scatter, to bring hope into every home. Oh, this is not an ordinary goal, to bring best hope into every home and to scatter publications like never before. If the sales of the Sally in AOP was 2 billion last year, 2000, or this year, 2014, then you have to sell and distribute more literature than like never before. That means you have to break your record. And I believe Director Palaya, Director Madera, Pastor Adi, Adi, with this kind of response, I believe they will they are going to accomplish like never before. Amen? Amen. Like never before. Because this is the first student AD Congress. You know, the brethren is after I'm going to discuss how the church members can be involved. We have a missionary work for the church members to participate in distributing our literature. Because the church must give their attention to this kind of work. And then the church is going to shine to the world. Then we'll see go forth fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners. But God calls for workers from every church among us to enter His service as campus evangelists. God loves His church. If the members will do His will, you see, I like this. His service, His church, His will. The Lord will greatly bless their efforts. Students, the Lord will greatly bless your efforts. And so today, we would like to have a special recognition of our student leadership evangelists here at AOP who are joining the ministry in a whole year round program, not only summer vacation, but during Sundays and holidays, they are bringing the hope into every office, every home, every person. And so today, We'd like to invite them. We'd like to request the organist to play a soft music for us. Soft music as we invite our uh, beloved literature evangelist, our student elders who are doing the whole uh, whole year round program. We are going because today, 2014 is the year of the literature evangelist. So everywhere I go, this is our our promise to the Lord that we are going to recognize our little evangelist students and full-time regular but today we recognize that these people in uniform who are doing already the Holy Run program are the ones who are the very core of this campus so we'd like to invite them to uh, come forward we are going to have a special prayer for you this moment being the year of the literature evangelist. So thank you, please come. So we would like to give them special dedication prayer. Is uh, Pastor Adalek is still with us? If he is around, let like to invite him to a special dedication prayer. Okay, please move, move here. Okay, thank you. And uh, two lines, maybe the ladies in front. The ladies in front. The ladies in front. Two lines. And may I invite all the publishing leaders to please stand. We will surround them. And may, I'm inviting all the ordained pastors, ordained elders of the church who are present with us. 
I'd like to invite you to come as we are going to have a dedication prayer. All Pharisee leaders, ordained pastors, and uh, ordained elders of the church who are here. All right. So, you continue the music. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, public and leaders, we will surround them, please. Some of you must stay here. Thank you very much. Okay, are you ready now? So, shall we special Catholic that here? Shall we get a request to invite you to please me and to pray? Father God, we come to you this morning, no time to Sabbath, expressing our joy and gladness for the salvation we have received through your Son Jesus Christ. And Lord, you have called us to bring the message, the hope to everyone. And Lord, this is the year of the Little Evangelist. Recognizing the church is recognizing the important role of our liturgy evangelists, bringing this message into everyone. So, Father, we thank you that in AOP campus we have this group of students who are doing student literature ministry the whole year round. So now, Lord, I pray that you will bless them in a special way with good health, peace of mind, the joy of service. Bless them in their studies, O Lord, including their parents. Who are supporting them. Some are just self supporting. And so, Lord, I pray that you will bless them, empower them according to your promise that all power will be given to us when they will be going out this coming summer vacation to bring the message to repentant faiths, visit homes and offices, oh God. Father, thank you that it is by the power of the Holy Spirit, not by our own abilities, but we make ourselves available. And so, Lord, today, as leaders and pastors of your church, we would like to raise our hands up, Lord, asking your divine mercies to be upon our students today here. That you have promised them special blessings of faith to overcome unbelief so that they will move forward of their decision to bring your message to repeated place this coming vacation. And Lord, in the audience, many of them have decided, some are still planning. I pray that your Holy Spirit will talk to us and will help, help us to respond to your calling. Father, thank you now that you have answered our prayer. Not because we are worthy, but because you are a faithful God. Thank you, because we ask all these things in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Now with your patience, give me the last seven minutes to to finish our message from the Lord. Let's practice it. The fourth right is the prime right. You know we will be overcoming all the challenges. The man riding on the white horse, not only with a bow, but with a crown. What is the meaning of crown? It means priority, it means also victory. When you are given a crown as the Miss Universe or Miss Earth, that means you are the priority among. And Jesus is coming. But before we can receive a crown, the text says in Revelation 6 verse 2, if you read that again, the man riding on the white horse, he went out. He did not stay idle. He went out conquering to conquer. That means to win the battle and receive the crown of glory means laboring. The true Christian must not be idle, but must be laboring. That's why we have a problem today in Adventist circle. Many are sick with what we call AIDS which is sometimes called by others 
Adventists in deep sleep. When we are not doing our responsibilities, it is not very literal. Although sometimes in the church also, many are sleeping literally during the same time. But I'm glad to have that same one here. But when we are not doing our responsibilities that God has given us, the privileges, you know, that God has given us, then we are suffering with AIDS. Adventists in deep sleep. But we want Jesus to come, you know, we want Jesus to come. But don't worry, if we are, some are suffering with AIDS. The time waiting for the Lord is to be spent not in idle waiting, but in diligent working. We are waiting for the Lord. But it's not alone to be waiting. It's not enough to be waiting. We must do. That's why I have presented to you a simple website that you can go. www.ft.com means waiting, watching, working for the coming of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Some are just waiting. Some also are watching. When the student elders are giving testimonies, you know, miracles happen, and it's a good word for many of the church members are watching. Okay, brother, come on, go ahead. That's good. Just watching. Many are spectators, but some are gladiators. They are the one making the action. And you are, you will be the one to make the action. Amen? Amen. You will be the one to make the action. Not only waiting, watching, but we'll be working for the Lord. And if we are victims of the sickness of AIDS, we are glad that Jesus can do something for us. He can do an operation. He said, I will give you a new heart. One time in Kagendi Oro City in Mindanao, I saw a chef. He said, we accept all broken things. Broken television watches all. We accept all broken things except broken hearts. <laughs> we cannot repair that. But God can repair. He is the greatest physician. So when we submit to Him, if we are afraid to go out to work for Him, you come to Jesus and ask, Lord, you have promised you will be with me. Give me that power. And you become an Adventist in dynamic service. Amen? Amen. So that's all what the Lord expected us to, to do. To be an Adventist in dynamic service. Jesus is the rider on the white horse. Let's ride with Him and receive the crown of glory. Amen? Amen. So, you know, the meaning of riding with Jesus today as we finish this worship means living a pure faith, overcoming trials and temptation, reaching high goals, involving in God's service, and going to final victory with Him. You will receive a crown of life. When he comes, and he will say to us, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. But this afternoon, I should be to reach. How many of us would like to ride with Jesus today and onward? Oh, shall we put our hands up and pray? Father, once again, we thank you. We close this worship today with joy and thanksgiving. You would like to ride with you, Lord, on a white horse, which means purity. And we have high goals, Father, to reach precious souls with a message and help us to be faithful, to be active, working for you and with you because we would like to receive the crown of glory when you come. And we would like to hear the commendation, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into my kingdom. Lord, bless this congregation now. Thank you because we ask this in Jesus' powerful name.